Amen. I want to take a few minutes this morning, and uh, I want to talk about invisible help or help from another world. Help from another world. Invisible help. Um, I'm going to make a statement right here that I believe all of us would have to say that is the truth. You cannot be a Christian without believing in the invisible realm. If anybody believes that, I want you to shout out amen. amen. You have to believe in the invisible to believe as a Christian, as a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ. There has to be this confidence in another world, another realm that is invisible. If we, if we are putting our confidence, our trust in just what we see with our natural eyes, we will be limited to what we see with our natural eyes. But we need to see the invisible. I want to read a scripture from 2 Corinthians 4.18. You've heard this scripture before. I've preached from it before. And I want to read it again this morning, kind of like as a, a text and a springboard. Paul said, while we, everybody say, we. So we're talking about ourselves. We're, talk, we're not talking about somebody down the road or whatever. I'm talking about me. You're talking about you. He said, while we look not at the things which are seen. Now, it don't mean we don't look at them. It don't mean we don't see them with our natural eyes. But he, he's saying we're not putting our emphasis on only on what we see with our natural eyes. He said, while we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things, we do look at the things which are not seen with the natural eyes. For the things which are seen are temporal or temporary. Everything you see is temporary. You can put your hand in front of you and look at that hand and say, hey, that's temporary. The seat you're sitting on is temporary. Everything you see here and every person you see is temporary because the physical aspect of our lives is temporal. He said, for the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. Now you've heard me say this before, we need to reiterate and we need to, to, to affirm and reaffirm the truth. And the truth is that there are things, actual things, that are existent, but you can't see them. You can't see them. Right now, I've got wind that's blowing across from that fan. I feel the effects of it, but I can't see it. Jesus, when he spoke to Nicodemus, he said, when it comes to the things of the Spirit, you have to understand. He said, you, 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 the, the wind, you don't know where it's coming from or where it's going. And the things of the Spirit are the same. Paul made a statement in Philippians 1.21. And you don't make these kind of statements unless you have a, a confident faith in the invisible. He said, for me to live, and he was talking about his natural, everyday existence. He said, for me to live and exist in this natural body, is Christ. And to die is gain. 
Do you know most people you would talk to, and even Christians, would have a bit of a problem swallowing that? You mean, if I were to die today, I gain something? Seems to me I lose everything. Everybody I know, I'm gone from them. Everything that I own, everything that's around me that I consider mine, I have no more contact with it. It seems to me that it's loss. Instead of gain, it's loss. But Paul said to die is gain. So there has to be this unshakable faith in the invisible. I'm not going to spend a lot of time talking about this, but there are angels that show up around you from time to time and probably save your life from time to time. And, and you think, well, that was close. And it was probably an angel that saved you, protected you. There are demonic entities that affect and influence your life negatively sometimes. I heard Keith Moore say, you know, like, like a lot of times people, people uh, look at an accident at an intersection. There's an 18 wheeler coming at the same time that you're there. And, and you say, you know, people, you don't say, well, that, that was a terrible act. That was a setup. You know the enemy can set things up to destroy you. He can arrange circumstances to destroy you. He can arrange circumstances to confuse you. He can arrange circumstances to bring us to a place where we don't know which way to turn or what to do. The enemy is existent. You don't see angels. You don't see demonic powers. But they are existent. And they are around us. Jesus spoke to Thomas. Remember when Jesus rose from the dead and the apostles, some of them met him and uh, they were amazed and thrilled that they'd seen him. And uh, they told Thomas about it. And Thomas said, unless I can put my finger in the nail print in his hand, and thrust my hand into his side where the spear went, I will not believe. He wanted some tangible, physical, natural evidence that could be seen with these eyes before he would believe. But when Jesus appeared to him, now people have different opinions about this, but when Jesus appeared to him, he said, Thomas, reach forth your hand and touch my side. Thrust your hand into my side. And be not believing, be not unbelieving, but have faith. I don't believe that Thomas actually did that. I think once Jesus spoke to him and he saw Jesus in front of him, he fell on his face. And the scriptures say he just fell down and said, my Lord, my God. When faith kicks in, when faith kicks in your life for any given circumstantial situation, you step beyond what is screaming at you. You step beyond what is pushing at you and trying to get you defeated and discouraged and despondent. You step beyond that and you look right into the situation and smile because you see something more than what is happening around you. When faith kicks in, you will die before you stop believing. God is looking for some people who will see the things that are invisible. Because he wants to help you, and he wants to help me, 
and he wants to send help from an invisible world in your everyday life. Amen? I mean, we've heard testimonies of people, and, and most of us can give testimonies about situations where we just don't know how we got out of it, how it turned around. I could spend some time telling you some things. I've done it before. I won't do that this morning. But God wants to send that help. He wants to minister to us. The scriptures say that, that the angels are ministering spirits sent to minister for those who are heirs of salvation. Those angels are waiting to do bidding in our lives. A lot of times we, we, we wonder why, 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 why are they not doing what they're supposed to do? Why are they not saving me? Why? A lot of times we're trusting too much in what we see with our natural eyes instead of trusting God and letting him perform the miracle. Letting his angels move into the situation and undo what the enemy has done. And bring about a miracle. In, I, I want to read the scripture that Jesus responded to Thomas. He said, Thomas, because you've seen me, you believed. But he said, blessed are they that have not seen, but yet have believed. You probably haven't seen Jesus, but you believe. You've not seen the nail prints in his hands or his feet, but you believe. You've not seen heaven, but you believe. You've not seen beyond this veil, what they call a veil of tears in this life. You, you, you haven't seen beyond that, but you believe. And God wants... He said, if you, can, if you can release your faith and believe without seeing, he said, you're blessed. Somebody say, I'm blessed. I'm blessed. Because you believe in the invisible, because you believe in what you cannot see, Jesus, the head of the church, said, you're blessed. He says, I'm blessed. Jesus said, you are blessed because your faith is released in the invisible. Now, I don't mind telling you this. We are heading into a time when your faith in invisible things that are important for the gospel and for believing the gospel, are going to be challenged more than ever before. We're heading into a time frame when you will actually be considered the crazy one to believe the gospel. That's why we need to preach this stuff, just what I'm preaching here this morning. There's nothing complicated about this. This is ABC 123. There's nothing complicated about it. It's simple. We're supposed to believe in what we cannot see. That's simple, isn't it? It may be challenging to go ahead and do it, but it is very simple. That's why I believe Jesus said, unless you can become like a little child, you cannot enter the kingdom of heaven. We need that childlike faith that believes because God said it, I believe it. If he says the angel is there, then the angel is there. If he says heaven is real, then heaven is real. If he says when I die, I slip out of my body and go into another realm that is more real than this one, then I believe it. Somebody say, I believe it. Well, that means you're blessed. Jesus said you are blessed because you believe in the invisible. Now, you know, this is, this, this is like brought out throughout the scriptures. And I just want to take you to a classic example 
and I've, I've read the scripture and preached from it many times. But let me, let me uh, just read the scripture for you for a moment. And when the servant of the man of God was risen early and gone forth, behold, a host compassed the city, both with horses and chariots. And his servant said unto him, Alas, my master, what shall we do? And he answered and, and said, Fear not, for they that be with us are more than they that be with them. Now this is Elisha and his servant. They get up in the morning, and the hillside is full of natural, tangible, real, what you can see with your eyeballs, real horses and chariots and soldiers with spears and swords and armor. They're all there. The hillside is full of them. He, Elisha said to him, he said, don't go being afraid of that. They that be with us are more than they that be with them. Now in verse 17, it says this, And Elisha prayed and said, Lord, I pray thee, open his eyes that he may see. Now he had already seen soldiers and chariots and horses. He had already seen all the evidence he thought he needed. The hill was full of the enemy's soldiers. But Elisha said, Lord, open his eyes so that he might see. And the Lord opened the eyes of the young man and he saw. Now, I want to say this. When the Lord opens your eyes, you see more than you see. When the Lord opens your eyes, you see stuff that you're not supposed to see normally and naturally. Lord, open our eyes. Amen? Open our eyes. Help us to see some stuff. But until that happens, and God is not obligated to open our eyes to see into the supernatural. He's not obligated to do that. He could do it if he wanted to. And sometimes he will do that. But he says, now listen closely, you are blessed if you can believe it without seeing it. Who was more, who was more blessed, Elisha or his servant? Elisha. Because Elisha was seeing the armies of God. He didn't need to have his eyes open, natural eyes, to see into the spirit realm. He knew it. He knew they were there. He was not afraid. Another thought that we need to, we need to bring in here is this. The armies, the horses and chariots and the horses of fire and all that stuff were there before the young man's eyes were open. Like, when God opened the young man's eyes, the horses and chariots and everything, they didn't just appear. They were there. He just couldn't see them. Listen to me. There's some stuff right now in your life that you cannot see. There is some stuff right now in my life that I cannot see. And God is saying, if you can see them with your eyes of faith, you are a blessed individual. I choose to work towards being blessed, seeing what I can't see, hearing what I can't hear, knowing what I can't know by the power of the Spirit. That's what God is looking for. And he said, that brings blessing. We need that. Everybody here knows we need that. All hell is breaking loose. The devil is bidding for the church right now. He's making everything you can see with these eyes and hear with these ears. He's, he's making everything look so terrible and ugly. 
He's making everything look so negative and ungodly and unscriptural and unlike what it ought to be. He's making it so terrible that you could be fearful if you didn't see something else. And God wants us today to open our spiritual eyes and see beyond what the media is telling us. See beyond what the, the, the social media or the TV media, whatever case it might be. See beyond that and see what God is saying. Because what God is saying, what God is preparing, what God has promised is real even though you can't see it. The enemy is pushing for you to be steered in directions you're not supposed to go by what your natural eyes see, what your natural ears hear. He's working. Listen, he got nothing else to use. That's it. He's scrounging. You know what that word means? I mean, he's, he's looking everywhere and trying everything. So that word scrounging, I've used it all my life. I don't know if you know it. He's scrounging for something that will get your attention and steer you in the wrong direction. But God is saying, don't veer off your course. Keep your eyes fixed on what is real, what is true. My prayer for us today, for the church today, for, for the churches of this city, this province, this nation, the churches around the world, is God open our eyes in the middle of the night when hell is pushing so hard against you. You don't know what you're going to do the next day. You don't know how you're going to fix problems. You don't know how you're going to do this. You don't know how you're going to fix this. In the middle of it all, God open our eyes to see that everything is under control. I see something. And it makes me smile even when I'm shuddering from the natural perspective. And some of you here know exactly what I'm saying. You feel it. You know it. You sense it. You say, Pastor, that is exactly the way I am. I, I see this and I don't know where we're going to go, what we're going to do. But I see something beyond what I see. I feel something beyond what I feel. I know something beyond what I know. And everything is under control. Is there anybody in the house besides me that sees and feels and knows that and you can smile in the midst of adversity? You can smile when all hell is breaking loose around you. You can smile when people are, are, are demonstrating and manifesting fear and want you to join them, but you can't join them because you know something. You can't join them because you see something. You can't join them because you've stepped into the realm of the supernatural and everything, as far as your spirit is concerned, is okay. Somebody shout it out. It's okay. it's okay. The devil is a liar. He's a liar. The Lord opened the eyes of the young man. Listen to this. I need to read it. The Lord opened the eyes of the young man who went out and came back saying, Elisha, we're in trouble. We're doomed. One, one translation says, we're doomed. We're done for I listen to the news sometimes now and I feel, God have mercy, we're doomed. Come on, anybody else feel some of that sometimes? I'm thinking, am I hearing what I'm hearing? Is this, is, is this, am I living in this day and I'm hearing this garbage coming out of these people's mouths and they're, they're, they're declaring that they're sane? We're doomed. But then in my spirit, I realize it's getting closer. He's coming soon. This thing is about to culminate. It's about to sh take shape. And the Lord opened the eyes of the young man and he saw. He saw. He saw. And listen to what he's seen. Behold, the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire. Fire around about Elisha. <laughs> it is the same. 
There are angels all around my bed when I go to sleep at night. What's the other part? I'm living up on the mountain and I'm all right. Remember that? I think we, we need to be doing some simple praying. When you go to bed, and hell is knocking on your door. Demons are knocking on your door and you don't know what to think or how to talk or how to respond. You need to smile and say, Father, thank you for the angels. Amen? Thank you for the angels. And when you get to the place where you don't know what to say, what to do, or what other words to say, start praying in the Spirit. Amen. Because they that are for us are greater than they that are against us. And the, the enemy had chariots and horses, but these chariots were fiery chariots. Fire would destroy the enemy's chariots and the enemy soldiers. But these were chariots of fire. We have the edge. It may not seem like it. It may not feel like it. You don't, you don't see the evidence on the outside. But your faith says everything is under control. And the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire around about Elijah. They were there before the young man's eyes were open. Listen, if God were to open your eyes and show you the evidence in the spirit realm... It's, it's, it's not that he's making it show up at that time. You're just seeing what was already there. What was already there. There are some things already prepared for you. There are some things already ready for each of us. And it's the same today as it was in Elisha's day. There are some things that are there. We can't see them. But it's around us. Fear will stop these things from manifesting and helping you. But faith will make them work. Peter, James, and John went up into the mountain of transfiguration with Jesus. And the Bible says that they saw Moses and Elijah talking to Jesus. And I mentioned this just not very long ago. I think it might have been in Bible study uh, and it may have been in church. I don't know. It won't really matter a whole lot. But Moses and Elijah had died hundreds of years prior to this incident. You get that? Moses and Elijah had died hundreds of years prior to this in incident where Jesus was transfigured. But here's Jesus on the mountain talking, conversing with Moses and Elijah. People who have died and gone on before are still there. You can't see them, but they're still with the Lord. They're still, if they were to appear to you, you'd know them. You say, how do you know I'd know them? Because they knew Moses and Elijah. Don't ask me to explain that. If you have to explain it, then you don't have to believe, do you? If you could have it explained. But one thing we know, just like Moses and Elijah appeared with Jesus, there are thousands Millions of believers who are waiting for your exit from here. Do you know there are exits and entrances every day in the earth? There are people coming, people going, people coming, papers coming, coming into the earth, and people are leaving on a regular basis. You know, we talk about people, John and I were talking yesterday, you know, that many people have died that we know personally.
And we, uh, we were talking about the fact that these people, you know, we, we look, we, we're looking at them, we're talking about them past tense because they, they've gone. They've exited. But down the road, they're going to be talking about us that way. I hate to have to be the one to tell you, but down the road, they're going to be talking about you in past tense. You know, oh, uh, poor so-and-so, he's gone. He's not poor. He's in the richest place ever if he knew the Lord. Amen? Amen. In Twelling Gate, when they talked about, uh, when they talked about someone that had died and gone on to be with the Lord, you know, they would say, poor so-and-so, whatever his name was, you know, poor this one, poor that one. <laughs> and, you know, no, 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 no. Rich, blessed. And you and I, are going to join them one of these days. We just need to get our, ourselves focused on what is real. There are some things that are more real than the visible things. And we need to get focused on the things, the invisible things that are eternal. Paul said the natural things are, are temporary. But these invisible things, that Jesus said, you're blessed if you see them, if you know them, if you believe them. You're blessed if you can do that now. He said, these things are the things that will be with you eternally, if you can believe them now. Somebody shout amen. 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 All this stuff we're using here today is temporary. Amen. Amen. <laughs> While we look not at the things which are seen. In other words, we're not going to get hung up on that. But we, we look at, we, we see the things that are invisible. And these things are eternal. You see, death challenges our faith. It challenges our faith. Because you, you're looking into somewhere you've never been. You're looking into somewhere that you don't understand and know about except by your faith. And the natural part of you will shudder thinking about death. But, you know, you take Moses in Hebrews eleven twenty seven 27, it says, By faith he forsook Egypt. He had everything at his fingertips, Moses did in Egypt. The riches of Pharaoh and his household. The Bible says he forsook Egypt not fearing the wrath of the king, for he endured, now listen to the scripture here. He endured seeing him who is invisible. That's interesting, isn't it? This was Moses back in Egypt. And the Bible says that he saw something. Something that was better and bigger and greater and more important than all the mansions of Egypt. All the riches of Egypt, all that the Pharaoh and his family could give him was not as good, not as wonderful, not as beautiful, not as enduring, was not eternal, but he, he endured. The Bible says that Moses endured. In other words, he stuck in there and he, 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 was, he probably had some fear try to get on him, but he stepped into his calling. And he endured seeing him who is invisible. And your salvation came the very same way. You decided to believe that Jesus, who died on the cross, and on the third day he rose again from the dead. You weren't there when he died. You weren't there when he rose from the dead. You weren't there when the 500 saw him and got the evidence they needed. You weren't there when all this stuff happened. But you read it and faith kicked in because you believed the word of Almighty God. And your faith now has got you ready to see him one day down the road. Bring it on. Amen. Because if I were to die here right now, i got a few stents in my heart keeping the, the, the blood vessels open so I don't die. <laughs> That's what they told me. I, I didn't see it. I, I saw little glimpses of it on screen. I have no idea what they did. It's kind of crazy. But I had to have some confidence and faith in what I couldn't see there. But you know what? If that stuff was all to collapse and give up and I died... 
what I believe in my heart would be so wonderful and so real that I'd say, I know it was nice back there, but please don't make me go back. How many of you believe that's the truth? Amen. They'll get over it. <laughs> They'll get over it. Amen. Joan, you'd get over it. <laughs> Open our eyes, Lord. Open our eyes. We want to see the invisible. The Bible says, Hebrews 11, 5, by faith Enoch was translated that he should not see death and was, fa and was not found because God had translated him. For before his translation, he had this testimony that he pleased God. Verse 6 says, but without faith, in other words, without that confidence in the invisible, it is impossible to please him. We have to make a decision that we believe what God said because he said it. And if you decide, no, I can't believe that, you cannot please God. God is not able to be pleased unless you can believe what you can't see. He wants to help you from an invisible world. He wants to come and rescue you in situations in a natural earthly life from another world. He wants to bless you while you're here. Getting you ready for when you leave to go there. Bring it on. Amen. Verse, verse 7 of the same chapter. I'm going to close in a couple of minutes maybe. By faith Noah, being warned of God of things not yet seen, moved with fear. In other words, he had total reverence and respect for God. He moved with their fear, preparing an ark to the saving of his house by the which he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness which is by faith. Noah had to believe what God said and make preparation. The reason you're in church this morning is because you believe what God said. It's because you believe the word of Almighty God. And, 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 and part of coming together like this is preparation for what God said is coming. This is a part of our preparation. We come, we get encouraged, we get strengthened, we get built up. It helps us go out and live our lives the way that God wants us to live them. And by faith, Noah being warned, there's, there's some things. You know the Bible says that Jesus Christ is coming back, taking vengeance on all those that believe not the gospel? The Bible says that. The Apostle Paul said that. So we know that. And we are preparing our lives. We're preparing for our future. So then faith comes by hearing. And hearing by the word of God. You hear. You believe. The Bible says if our gospel is hid. It is hidden from those that are lost. In whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not. Lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, the truth, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. Faith is knowing on the inside what God promised you is real and true. And it's that knowing on the inside of you that won't let go. It won't quit. It won't stop. Believe me. God is invisible. Paul said to the only wise, invisible God, when Jesus came, he showed a visible part of God to the world, and they crucified him. That's why God wants us to believe and see him with faith. Because if the world saw him again, they'd do the same thing. They'd crucify him. If religion saw him again, they'd do the same thing. They'd crucify him. But those of us who love him, we see him by faith now. And our faith locks on, locks on to what the word says. 
We don't have to be afraid. Don't be afraid of death. Don't be afraid of a supernatural realm, world. Don't be afraid of powers of darkness, demonic spirits. Don't be afraid of angels. They're there to help you. Don't worry about that stuff. Just smile and say, thank you, Lord, for all that you've done for us, all that you've prepared for us. Now, I just scratched the surface of this stuff. I wanted to just stir you up a little bit this morning and remind you, we are connected to an invisible world, and that invisible world is more important than any part of this natural world that we have connection with. It doesn't mean that God don't want you blessed in this natural. I'll tell you something. God will bless what you do and what you put your hand to in this natural world because you believe in the invisible world. When you release your faith and believe in what God said, He'll send angels to the natural world and make sure you succeed. To make sure you're safe. To deliver you, protect you, and provide for you. He'll do that. We just need to keep our focus on what is eternal. What's eternal? The invisible. So that the visible can have the blessing of God in its temporary lifespan. That makes sense? That makes sense? Amen. Yes, it does. Bow your heads with me. Father, I thank you for helping us to see what we can't see. And I pray that you open our eyes to see even more. And that all of us together, along with our brothers and sisters that are not here with us today, will be encouraged and strengthened. And that we may get our eyes off the fleeting foolish, silly things of this world that try to get our attention and fix them on the Lord Jesus Christ, the King of kings, the Lord of lords, the master of everything. We thank you for that. We thank you for your children, Lord. We thank you for our brothers and sisters. We thank you for those who call you Lord. And we thank you that we have this union, this this connection with each other because we love you and we know you. And we thank you that one day we'll spend eternity together. Until then, our hearts will go on singing. Until then, with joy, we're going to carry on until the day we see him face to face. And we're looking for that day. We're longing for that day. But we thank you that right now in this life, we have help from another world. We have an invisible kingdom that is rooting for us and helping us and strengthening us and encouraging us. And I pray that throughout the remainder of this day, we might be more encouraged than ever to put our confidence and our trust in that which is greater, higher, bigger, and stronger than anything this world has to throw at us.